Welcome back. For an island nation, New Zealand has a bad track record when it comes to drownings. And Pioneer Leisure Centre is looking to lower this rate with the building of their new Learn to Swim pool. As Jenny Gerbic found out, learning to swim is becoming more and more of a priority for Christchurch parents. It's a shocking statistic that on average 105 New Zealanders die every year from drowning. New Zealand's drowning toll is one of the worst in the developed world and this year Pioneer Leisure Centre has taken a step to reverse these figures. Pioneer are building their new Learn to Swim pool as New Zealanders begin to recognise the need for water safety. It's a huge, huge uptake from parents on Learn to Swim. It seems that they'll put their money into that rather than just about anything. When times get tight, they still want their kids to learn to swim. And while the pool is still about six months away, there's a high demand for swim classes. And Pioneer is pushing the fact that it's never too late to learn to swim. We also have adult classes for people who want to learn to swim who are a bit older. And these are scheduled throughout Saturday, Sunday, every day of the week. To teach them about the water and what, water's, you know, what water can, and can do to you is very, very important. But not only that, the Learn to Swim facility will please even the most able swimmer. Behind me is one of the pools they currently use for the Learn to Swim classes. But as you can see, it's also used by the general public. By creating this new Learn to Swim pool, it'll free up space for recreational users. The new pool will be open for use by the beginning of next year. Gina Gerbic, Metro News. Rugby's ITM Cup has well and truly started. This week, teams head into the eighth round. This grassroots competition is well known for bringing forth new players. We sent Lacey Wilson down to check out one of Canterbury's rising stars in action. Meet Paul Noamo. The 20-year-old is one of the newest Canterbury rugby recruits. It's real good, a eh? professional, like everyone's on their game all the time, as opposed to all the other teams you, you're a part of. One of the first teams Paul was a part of was at Christchurch Boys High School. And he says it wasn't reading and writing he went to school for. Because I, I wasn't good at like, schoolwork, so I just thought I'd smash someone while I was there. <laughs> as hooker on the rugby field, of course, and now he gets to play amongst the best of them. I honestly had no idea that I'd be, that I'd be here. And, um, um, I just sort of walked up the stairs and the coach pins just, just said congratulations. And I thought he was talking about the under-20s. And I was like, oh, thanks. And I was just telling him about my trip. And he was like, oh, um, congratulations, I'm making a team. And, I, and then I just, I was real shocked there, but I was stoked at the same time. He may have been surprised to make the team, but now he feels he has a role. Yeah, I think um, I just bring excitement to the team, just because I'm young. Um, all these boys got the wisdom and I just bring the energy. Along with energy, the self-professed character is also a world champion, being part of the baby black side that won in Argentina earlier this year. We've got heaps of emails and stuff and it just makes you feel like you're representing your country. And when you win, it feels like you've done everyone proud and stuff. Oh, it was awesome. And when I ask him if he wants to carry on representing his country? Oh, of course. Yeah, if I'm lucky, but just start out here, I guess, with the Kennedy team. So hopefully this boy in red and black will soon be in all black. Lacey Wilson, Metro News. Now it's time for our Volunteer of the Week, and this time it's slightly different. Our feature volunteer is not just one person, but a group of people who stepped up to help their community at a time when they needed it most. Civil Defence is the first port of call for most in an emergency. Not, however, for the residents of Littleton. They had to turn to the Littleton Information Centre, where volunteers from both the centre and the Littleton Time Bank kept the town under control. We got a um, notification via the Littleton Fire Brigade that the Civil Defence sector post on Winchester Street here wasn't open and they were very, very busy. They asked us if we could step in. From cups of coffee to supplying residents with boiled water or just someone to talk to, the Littleton Time Bank was a central point for all. This became a place where most people came in to find information or to get help or to debrief about what had happened for the earthquake, as well as like we were looking after displaced travellers too. But not only helping those who came to the centre, the Time Bank had volunteers calling everyone in Littleton, over 65, to check if they were all right. Are they okay? Do they need anything? Do they have water? Do they have any damage? Is there any work that's going to need to be done? Any other things they need to tell us about? You know, are you fine? Type thing. One Littletonian who is particularly grateful to the Time Bank volunteers 
Rachel O'Sullivan. The house is pretty, uh, pretty wonky. And we did right on a cliff. Yeah. So, kind of, you know, yeah. and we were just like, oh, we better get out of here. Rachel was out of her house for three nights and was unsure if she'd ever get back in with an entire wall missing and the chimney collapsed. I just was like, I can't do this on my own. And so we were just at the community and the time they have been amazing. Feeling shared by everyone, especially grateful is the woman in charge of it all. People are thanking me, thank you, thank you. But it's not me, it's this community and it's this team of volunteers. And you really need to get that across that I am nothing without my volunteers and this community. So yeah, I've just had the honour of doing this role. So despite the damage to Littleton's buildings, their sense of community has only been strengthened. Gina Gerbic, Metro News. And that's Metro News for this week. Remember, if you have a story you think we should cover, make sure to send us an email at metronews at windowslive.com or call us on 03 940 7572. Join us again on CTV at 7pm next Thursday. Good night.